I just got a comment from one of our viewers that says, too bad dry kibble has too much oil in it to be properly stored in mylar bags with an oxygen absorber. I talked to a vendor about this. You know what? That's not true. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kylene. When I read that comment, I thought, ah, it's about time that I did some really good research and figured out how to make sure that we have the food that we need to feed our furry friends as well as our family. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different options that you have and take care of some of the myths that happen to be out there. The first thing I wanna talk about is making your own pet food. I have books on cats too that I ordered, but they haven't arrived yet. So once I get them, I will have the full spectrum. But when you look through these books, there's all kinds of different recipes that you can make out of what we term people food. So that is a really good option in case you run out of something that's been stored commercially, or if you want to feed your pets better than what I get in the bags from Costco back here. You need to make sure that their diet is balanced and that they're getting all the important nutrients. And so resources like these can be really helpful when you do that. Let's talk about storing cans of pet food. Most of those will actually have a shelf life of between five and seven years. The best if used by date that's on it, it's not your edible date, but you need to store it in a cool, dry location. If you store it in your garage, it's not even gonna last to the best if used by date. So make sure that you store it appropriately and you can get a long shelf life. Now let's talk about the dry kibble behind me. So I contacted my friends at Pack Fresh USA because I wanted to make sure that I gave really good information. And the bottom line is you can store dry kibble, like what's behind me, in a mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. Now let's do a little bit of the research here. I went through and whenever we decide whether or not it's appropriate to put food in a mylar bag and to use an oxygen absorber, we've got to look at the basic ingredients. So I pulled up dog chow by Purina and it has a crude fat of 10% and a moisture content of 12%. Now we want to keep that moisture content down 10%-ish, right in that ballpark. So this would be okay, but not ideal. And that doesn't mean we can store it for 30 years. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. The maintenance cat formula that I have behind me from Costco has a crude fat of 20% and a moisture content of 10%. And then the adult dog food, it has a crude fat of 16% and a moisture content of 10%. The 10% means that it's a good candidate for longer term storage, not long term, but longer. You can store it longer. I would consider these short term storage items. The problem with this is the fat. High fat will go rancid in storage. And so we need to protect against that. Well, how do we prevent that chemical process called rancidity from happening in our foods? we need to get rid of the oxygen. That's why oxygen absorbers are great because the chemical process actually needs some oxygen to be able to work. So the lower the oxygen environment, the slower that chemical reaction is going to take place. And we need to protect it from light. Whatever container you put it in, light will actually trigger that chemical process for rancidity. And so we've got to keep it cool, dark, and we want to keep it dry. Before storing your specific pet food, make sure that you go online and look up the analysis that's on it. It should give you the fat content and the moisture content. If you have a moisture content of 20%, you should not be storing it in a low oxygen environment because that has other challenges, including potentially the problem for botulism. But here where we've got 10%, we should be good. Now what you see behind me is a year supply for our pets. We have two larger dogs and we have four cats. So each of them roughly, we're gonna need five bags of food to take care of these guys. This is a lot of stuff to store. And when I bought it, it cost like $350. It was a pretty expensive chunk, but now I have everything that I need for a year. The best if used by dates that are on these packages one of them is July of 25 and the other one is June of 25. And right now it is July of 24. So roughly just in these bags, the manufacturer is saying that the shelf life is about a year. Now, remember that 
date doesn't mean, oh, today it's good and tomorrow it's bad. That's how long the manufacturer guarantees that the food in that bag will be a certain quality level. So even in these bags, you could store it a little bit longer, but if you wanted to extend that life, we would need to repackage it. Now, if you just want to keep a year supply and that's all you want, what I would do is I would take a black Sharpie, write the date on the bag and make sure that you just rotate it really well. Always take the oldest one and use it up. By the way, the manufacturer recommends that within three months after opening the bag, you use it up or discard it. I've never done that. I've always just used it till it's gone. So I think we're okay there. Now, if you want to repackage it, there's some cost involved. You will need oxygen absorbers and Mylar bags. Now you could just put it directly in a plastic bucket with an oxygen absorber, put the lid on, but you've got a couple of problems. The first one is that over time, there's a slow permeation of oxygen through the walls of the bucket. Doesn't really matter if it's a short-term storage. If you're only storing it for four or five years, that doesn't matter. If you want the best quality, you would line it with a Mylar bag, dump the kibble in there, put the oxygen absorber, heat seal that bag shut, and then put the lid on it because that provides a true oxygen barrier. The other thing that that does is it protects it from light. If I just store it in a plastic bucket, some light gets through and light triggers rancidity. So we wanna make sure that we protect it both from light and from oxygen. But then even if I did all of that, but I stored it in a hot garage, it's not gonna last that long. But if instead, if I was able to store it either at room temperature or in a cool basement, that's gonna really extend the life. The cooler the temperature, the longer your shelf life's gonna be, just like it is with your food. But especially with this dry kibble, it's super important because you have such a high fat content. For me personally, I do not plan to store this for a long period of time. I'm going to get a year supply and I'm going to just rotate through it. Now to save some money, you could actually put some of these smaller bags, not the big ones, but if you get smaller containers, you can just slide it into a Mylar bag, slit the original bag and slide an oxygen absorber in there, then close it and heat seal that shut. Then when you want to use it, you're gonna cut the end off, pull out that bag, and then you can reuse the bag. You could reuse um, bags that you just poured the kibble in also, but you need to get it super clean because even a small speck of rancid oil will spread the rancidity like crazy. Joseph Bell, who is a food scientist, did some great videos with us explaining that process, but you need to make sure that bag when you reuse it is squeaky clean. If I've slid the bag of kibble in there in the original bag, I haven't contaminated my bag. And then when I slide the next one in, the kibble is all in the original container. So it's not actually gonna to be touching the inside of the bag. So if you want to save some money, that is definitely a possibility. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure exactly how long you could extend the life before it goes bad. It depends on the fat content of the original kibble, whether the fat was cooked into it or sprayed on the top. There's so many different factors that I, I can't tell you, but I know for us, we're just going to, we have a year supply and we are just rotating it through it. So every two months, I need to go buy a new bag of dog food and a new bag of cat food. And that goes in the back so that I use the oldest first always. I highly recommend getting reference books. I don't, I don't know if these books are better than other books, but just the fact that I have these recipes that tells me how I can make food for my animal. If I've got this year supply, but I've got more people food that I can turn into pet food, that would be super helpful. I'm, but I'm a huge fan of reference books for preppers. I hope that that helped you when it comes to storing food for your pets. I think that it's really important that we think about them as we prep. And so now for the question of the day, what is your plan for feeding your furry friends during hard times? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.